Welcome everybody to Abundant Life Chapel online. We're so glad that you could join us today. If you'd like to know more information about us, you can check us out on our social media platforms. We're on Facebook and Instagram. And any other contact information that you need can be found on our website. Special thanks to those who have been supporting us financially. You can continue to do so by downloading the app Tithely and also through our website. I hope today's message will inspire you and build your faith.
Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name of Jesus. Oh, shout Jesus from We're on week six of our series, Blessed. We often equate being blessed as a term uh, uh, for good fortune, like when we receive something good or when we experience a desired outcome or exceptional comfort. But what does it really mean to be blessed? Well, Jesus had this to say in Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 to 12. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Now, these verses in Scripture are known as the Beatitudes. And in these Beatitudes, Jesus makes the statement, blessed or blessed are those who have this particular attitude and explains the benefit of having that particular attitude. The message of the Beatitudes is in, indicates that in order to be blessed or truly happy, we are to pursue things that are very much counterculture to the norm. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek and, or humble. Blessed are, are those who hunger and thirst. Blessed are the merciful. Listen, those don't really sound like things that most people would pursue when in the pursuit of happiness. Yet Jesus' uh, roadmap to a blessed life is marked out by these very things. Today, we'll look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart. Now, 
That's the attitude Jesus is telling us to have. And what is the benefit of having said attitude? Well, in in the latter part of verse 8, it says, For they will see God. For they will see God. Now, back in, in 2011, Flint, Michigan, a metropolis of just over 100 kilometers northwest of Detroit, was on the verge of bankruptcy. Now, at one time, it was the hub for the auto manufacturing industry, but it lost ground on the industry level, causing its economic or economy to plummet. While attempts were made to salvage the city's finances, it was their drinking water and their community's health that took the biggest hit. You see, in 2014, they decided to switch their drinking water supply from Detroit over to the Flint River. In previous years, the river had served as a dumping place for the factories, the meat pla- uh, packing plants, uh, paper mills. Raw sewage was dumped in there, in their river, along with other toxic runoff from farms and landfills. It was nasty. It didn't take long for the water quality issues to take its effect. Citizens complained of foul-smelling, discolored, and off-tasting water. Clinics and hospitals started treating people for skin rashes and hair loss. Not long afterwards, elevated levels of lead were actually found in the blood work of children, which affected brain function and development caused reduced IQ, anemia, hearing impairment, and even heart disease. All of this was linked to lead poisoning. Eventually, access to safe bottled water was provided to all the Flint uh, residents, while a new water pipeline from Lake Huron was being developed. Along with a massive effort to replace all the lead-contaminated water pipes in the city. Even here in our own country, many of our indigenous people on reserves do not have access to clean drinking water. The impurities and contaminants in their water supply have caused great harm to many. Now, let's think of this in the context of purity of hearts, right? There's so much around us in our culture that can contaminate our spiritual, uh, the spiritual condition of our hearts. You see, years ago, the only place a person could access pornography was either going and purchasing a magazine or renting or purchasing movies from a triple X store. Today, it's freely accessible on the internet. And what about our culture's obsession with self and glamour and fame? People go into all kinds of debt in hot pursuit of achieving the right image. Driving fast cars, owning big homes, wearing the expensive and the latest and the greatest in fashions, indulging in exotic holidays just so that we can be happy or sell the perception that we're blessed. Yet uh, Jesus steers our focus onto things that oddly contradict our perception of the blessed life. Blessed are, or blessed are the pure in heart. Now, the Greek word uh, for pure is katharos. Now, katharos means clean, pure, innocent, unsoiled, unmixed, unpolluted, to be cleansed, purged, forgiven, to be holy, to have a single purpose, that of God's glory. Simply put, the person who is pure in heart lives a clean life. The Apostle Paul wrote this in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And Peter, uh, a first century follower of Jesus, wrote this in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 15 to 16. He said, But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. 
Now, Peter is quoting scripture recorded in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 2. And the context of that is when God spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai. Mount Sinai is the place where God gave the Ten Commandments. Now, this seems to be such like a tall order and to be holy as God is holy. Like as if that could ever happen for any of us. But when we look at the Beatitudes closely, we see that it's a roadmap to holy living. It's a roadmap to Jesus, recognizing our need for him as Lord and Savior of our lives. The Beatitudes, beginning with poor in spirit, as Christians, we are people who are dedicated to living out the rest of our lives for God. We recognize our own spiritual poverty. We mourn over our spiritual condition of our hearts. It, it causes us to be humbled, to be meeked before God. We become so desperate for God that we hunger and thirst and strive to, be, to live a righteous life. And our behavior becomes affected so much so that we become agents of mercy because we have first have been recipients of his mercy. And then we arrive at this one of the most difficult beatitudes so far. Blessed are those who are pure in heart. Blessed are those who strive for pure and holy living. We might rightly see ourselves as poor in spirit, and mourning over our sin. We might rightly see ourselves as humbled before God and desperate for his righteousness, which, uh, uh, you know, and and then we might even rightly see ourselves as one whose uh, affection have uh, have been changed and have become agents of God's love and mercy. But the pure in heart part can be a a hard picture to, uh, to process. The picture of purity seems like a picture of perfection. And in the world of social media, a variety of filters are used to enhance image, our image. Our culture has become so obsessed with the perception of perfection. But is perfection really what God wants of us? Now, the Pharisees in Jesus' day sought out perfection. They did everything humanly possible to present a perfect image. Yet Jesus said this to them in Matthew chapter 23, verses 27 to 28. He said, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of bones of the dead and everything unclean. In the same way, On the outside, you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside, you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. You see, we can easily make this journey to purity more complex than it really needs to be. I mean, abiding by 613 laws to achieve perfection seems quite extra. I don't know about you, but I don't think I could ever do that on my own. And is that really what Jesus is telling us here about being pure in heart, that he expects perfection? And that the only way that we'll ever live the blessed life is to achieve perfection? Or was he uh, communicating something else? Maybe something much simpler. Something less complicated. How about this? Blessed are those who are purely and wholeheartedly devoted to God. We are imperfect people who serve a perfect God. We don't need to be perfect because he is already perfect and the only one who will ever be perfect in this universe. Now that doesn't mean that we're completely off the hook and we can live and direct our lives any way that we want. Of course not. That's not blessed living. But a person who purely and wholeheartedly devotes their life, their lives to God, will experience his blessing, the blessed life. Oswald Chambers uh, wrote this. He said, beware of making a fetish of consistency to your convictions instead of being devoted to God. 
I like how Pastor Luke Gordon, lead pastor of, of Connect Church in Saskatoon, simplifies this statement, and he says this. He says, be careful not to become so concerned with doing your faith right. Instead, become so caught up in uh, loving the one whom we have our faith in that our hearts come to be made pure. We love our how-to manuals and tutorials in life, don't we? Self-help books or literature, blogs, vlogs, videos on how to achieve the perfect result. The problem is, if we could achieve perfection on our own, what need would there be for Jesus? Religion, religion is based on what I can do, whereas Christianity is dependent solely on what God has already done. We can so easily be obsessed with trying to do and say all the right things, read our Bibles and pray every day, live pure and sinless lives, yet forget what the process is really all about. Drawing near to a holy God. David, the ancient king of Israel, wrote this in Psalm 51.10. He said, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit, within me. Only God can make us pure in heart. And he is calling us to him. James, the half-brother to Jesus, wrote this in James chapter 4, verse 8. He said, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Those who are pure in heart are imperfect people who are whole, wholeheartedly devoted to serving a perfect God. Religion is about serving out of obligation, while serving out of relationship is fully fueled by passion and desire, a want-to spirit. Pure in heart people are in tune with God and walk in step with His Holy Spirit. They live lives devoted wholeheartedly for God. Those who are pure in heart live differently than those who aren't. Blessed, which means fortunate, happy, and favored, are the pure in heart. Why? For they will see God. King David wrote in Psalm 24, verses 3 and 4, he said, Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god? Jesus is the closest anyone on this earth has ever been to seeing God. Moses only caught a glimpse of God's backside when he passed by him on Mount Sinai as recorded in Exodus chapter 33, 21 to 23. No human being could ever see the face of God and live because he is holy. But God came in the form of a man, Jesus, so that we could all see him. Jesus said this in John 14, 9. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Has anyone ever said to you that you resemble your father or your mother, either by your looks or your personality or your character? Maybe it's been said that you're a spitting image of them. In one way or another, they make reference to how much you emulate them. My wife is a good example. There are many times she emulates both her mother and her father. See, Melanie is the constant optimist, like her father, always putting, uh, always seeing the bright side of things. And then, like her mother, she's always putting the needs of others far beyond, far beyond, uh, beyond her own needs. Sometimes I like to fo poke fun at Melanie whenever she reminds me of her mom and saying, "Is that right, Florence?" But it's true, children emulate their parents, and for good reason. Parents are the top main influencers in a child's life. And close behind that are the grandparents. My point is this. Jesus refers to God as Father. 
Paul in Galatians chapter 3 and, and, and 4 makes reference that because of our faith in Christ Jesus, we become children of God. He is our Father. He is our Abba. And as children, His children, we are to emulate radiate him in our lives as christians we strive to be like christ we will never be christ because it's humanly impossible to be as perfect as he is in every way but in our lives we can emulate his attributes his his character his goodness by living lives of wholehearted devotion to him by loving others the way he first loved us, by forgiving others as he has first forgiven us, by being merciful to others as he has first been merciful to us, by living our lives in such a way that love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and and self-control are evident in our lives. We will never become God or a God, but we will emulate the God we serve. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. When David, the ancient king of Israel, looked at his life, he saw God's fingerprints all over it. David was confident that the Lord was always right there with him. Listen to his words in Psalm 16, verse 8. He says, I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With uh, With him at my right hand, I will never be shaken. David, a human being, just like us, wasn't perfect, he made, and, and he made mistakes, even big ones, colossal ones. Yet, he was granted forgiveness, mercy, and grace by God Almighty, who was holy and perfect in every way. According to 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14, and Acts chapter 13, verse 22, David is known as a man after God's own heart. Why? Because he emulated God, his heavenly Father, by pursuing a pure heart and trying to live a clean life. As we pursue Almighty God with wholehearted devotion, we will emulate him in our lives. People will see the fingerprints of the Almighty God in our lives and on our lives. Pastor Bruce Hadley of Fellowship in the Word Church developed a habit that he's been practicing for over 25 years to help him see God in his daily life. May this encourage you today. This is what he says. Before I go to sleep, I try to recall the events of my day, and I look for the evidence of God at work in my day. How did he guide me? How did he protect me in situations or discipline me in others? How did he help me with this relationship or that relationship? And Several other things I go over, reflecting on and noticing God's fingerprints in my life that day. He found as he took time to reflect on his faith, or reflect, his faith grew, and so did his prayer life, as did his ability to recognize God in his life. Bruce goes on to say this, many things that I wouldn't have thought twice about suddenly became clear signs of his presence in my life. When we become aware of God working in us and through us, it tends to bring us or bring our spiritual clarity that sharpens our awareness of his presence and involvement in our everyday life. Blessed are the pure in heart, those who are wholeheartedly devoted to God, for they will see him. They will see God. They will see his fingerprints on their lives and others will see him by how they live and conduct their lives. Listen to this in 1 John 3, verses 1 to 3. It says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And And that is who we are, what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, Now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. All have this hope in him, purify themselves just as he is pure. Now listen, blessed are the pure in heart, for they 
will see God. Do you want to see God? Then live with wholehearted devotion, serving Him. Amen? Let's pray today. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this message. God, if nothing else, I pray that this would reinforce in our lives the importance of living a pure life, to living with purity in our heart. God, it goes much more beyond than, than sexual purity. Lord, it goes into having pure motives in how we approach you. Lord, we want to serve you out of devotion. We want to serve you out of passion and, and, and a want-to spirit, God. Lord, we want to serve you wholeheartedly so that the things that you desire are the things that we desire. That, Lord, we be called according to your plan and to your purposes, Lord, instead of our own agendas. God, give us purity. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that helps us do this because there's no way we could possibly do this on our own. And we thank you that your Holy Spirit has come to, to live inside us, to reside us in us, to give us the power uh, to, to live a life of purity. God, I thank you for this. Lord, make our hearts pure today. If there's anything that's holding us back, Lord, in our hearts, God, let us surrender it to you. Let us give it to you so that we can live with pure hearts towards you and for you. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. Well, I hope this message encourages you today. I hope that it builds your faith. Listen, if you'd like to, you can join us Sunday mornings here uh, at Abundant Life Chapel, 94th Street, right here in Lactabonny at 1045 a.m. Or if you'd like to continue to catch us here online, you can do so. Same time, same YouTube channel. God bless everyone.